What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training. HQ. And today's video is going to be on what to do when your knees are caving in on the back squat, how to fix that, and if it's even a problem in the first place. And this is something that I see come up a lot in conversation, and I wanted to bring on a special guest to help answer this in a more complete way than I could answer myself, which would just be mostly based on personal experience. So instead, I brought in Andrew Vygotsky, who is a research assistant for Brad Contreras, who I've also had on my channel, and he's also a consultant for the Strength Guys. And his area of expertise is specifically in biomechanics. So that's why I bring him on to talk about this and to delve deeper into it than I could. And then what I'll also do is I'll also add my own two cents at the very end as far as how to put this in application. I'll include a link to his Twitter page in the description, which is all he wanted me to include. So without further ado, I'll let Andrew take over. So I'll start with the improbable causes first. And something to keep in mind throughout this whole thing is it normally happens during really heavy loads. And if you look during the eccentric portion, it doesn't really happen. But once they start the concentric portion or the upwards phase of the movement, then it occurs. So with these in mind, there are a few things that are out kind of right away. That would be knee morphology, which would be the medial or the medial femoral condyle is larger relatively than the lateral one. And the next one would be hip morphology. So an example of that would be like femoral antiversion. So the rotation of the femur, kind of where it is relative to the hip joint. Next would be ankle morphology. So the ankle actually isn't just in the sagittal plane, the hinge is kind of angled like you see in this picture. But if any of these were to be the case, this would happen with any load you give somebody and you couldn't change that anyway. Next would be ankle dorsiflexion range of motion. Uh, one study, Bell et al. 2007, found that once they put subjects, uh, once they elevated their heels a little bit, this fixed their medial knee displacement. Uh, also of note is that subjects with knee, medial knee displacement had greater external rotation and uh, hip extensor strength. But uh, I think if this were the case, it would happen across all loads because they wouldn't be able to get into that dorsiflexion position at any time. Next one would be weak arches. So that would lead to pronation of the foot and therefore the knees would cave in. I really don't think this is the case because if it were, I think it would happen on the descent portion of the movement, um, but it just happens upon the ascent. Also, they're able to stabilize that throughout the entire rest of the movement. So I think if that were the case, they would get the bar on their back and it would almost happen immediately, but I could be wrong. Next is hip abduction, adduction range of motion, which kind of says the adductors are too tight, so somebody can't keep their knees out, and the hip abductors kind of pulls them inwards. I don't think this is the case either, because I think that would happen with any load, not just maximal loading. Uh, next is weak abductors, so like glute medius, TFL maybe. Now this is possible because the adductors are needed in the squat. They act as pretty strong hip extensors, especially in the, in the very deep portion. If they can't counter the adductors contracting, then the adductors are just gonna pull the hips in. Next would be adductor hip extension moment arm. So moment arm kind of says, what is the mechanical advantage of this muscle with creating torque at that joint? So like I said before, the adductors have a pretty large hip extensor moment arm, especially during deep flexion. But nobody has yet looked at this in the case of external rotation or transverse abduction. It could be the case that if you do keep your knees out, it may affect the adductor's moment arm, therefore limiting the amount of hip extension torque the hip adductors can create. I think that's very possible. Actually, Brett Contreras kind of came up with that theory. Uh, although it hasn't been shown. So 
again, it's just hypothetical, but it, it is possible. Next would be plantar flexion strength. So the medial gastroc is a dynamic knee stabilizer and people with medial knee displacement have weaker plantar flexors and maybe weaker posterior tibialis too. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the next one, uh, quadriceps and hamstrings, they co-contract. Uh, and this could be a huge contributor as Lloyd and Buchanan noted in 2001. So basically what this means is uh, the muscles on the lateral side might be stronger. So that will kind of force the knee inwards if the muscles on the lateral side are pulling. So if the lateral hamstrings, the lateral gastroc, the lateral quadriceps are pulling, it can pull that knee inwards. And this seems to be a pretty, uh, pretty solid theory. Okay, so the next question is how serious of a problem is it, especially considering how many high-level Olympic lifters will do this, for example, in the bottom of catching a clean? Um, so again, it depends. I'd say the main factor is, is it controlled? Because in Olympic lifters, they know their knees are caving in. That may help give them more range of motion. Um, so I'll go over a few of the things that kind of determine whether or not it's safe. Uh, so that would be, is it active or passive components that's kind of stabilizing the knee at that point? So is all the stress going to ligaments such as the MCL or ACL or is, are you stressing those ligaments or are your active musculature still kind of stabilizing the knee joint? Are your hamstrings still posteriorly translating your knees such that it doesn't stress the ACL as much? Things like that. Uh, another one is joint laxity. So uh, people with general joint laxity, they have more give. It's probably less dangerous for them than people who have, I don't want to call it sensitive ligaments, but ligaments that are more prone to tear rather than kind of have elastic give to them. Another thing to consider is the PCAM, which is peak knee abduction moment because the knee is folding outwards, it's knee abduction. So if there's a higher knee abduction moment, that will increase the chance of an ACL tear. But again, that goes back to which components are holding it together. Is it the active components or the passive components? And again, knee morphology, what I talked about before, maybe the medial knee or the medial condyle of the knee is larger. So it could be very well that you're just kind of resting on that condyle and there's nothing on your soft tissues at all. First off, it depends what the problem is. So if it's a morphological problem, such as the medial condyle of your knee is larger, or you have hip antiversion, or if you have an ankle joint that doesn't allow you to track directly over your foot, then there's really not much you can do about that. Um, that said, it cannot hurt to continuously be tweaking and improving your form and you especially want to keep good form even when you go heavy because that's when it's potentially even more injurious. Uh, also adding ex accessory movements such as seated hip abductions or bad girls or sideline clams, stuff to strengthen your hip abductors in case it is your adductors that are overpowering your abductors and kind of making your knees cave in. So if you do strengthen your abductors, it can pull your knees back out. Like we said before, just to reiterate, medial knee displacement in and of itself is not necessarily a problem given that it's controlled and given that you're not relying on passive structures. If you are relying on passive structures, it may increase your risk of injuries such as ACL, patellofemoral pain, so on and so forth. Unless you have pain or you have problems, I, it's not something I would necessarily worry about, especially if it's a controlled movement. That's the most important part in my opinion. Um, anyway, thanks for listening guys. I hope this helps. Okay, so I'd like to thank Andrew for thoroughly breaking that topic down for us. And I'd like to add a couple points to expand upon his idea of perfecting your movement pattern and tweaking your technique in the back squat to help fix this issue. And that's to use an accessory exercise where you use a wider stance and then force your knees out, but then go light enough to where you can keep those knees out. And then typically this will help train you to keep those knees out and then the normal back squat won't feel quite as difficult to do so where your stance is narrower. 
And then another option is to simply just narrow your competition stance. And this may be the case if you're just a more quad dominant lifter and you're just trying to force a position that you're not strong in in the first place and never will be. Also what you could do is you could just point your feet more forward so that then you don't have to have as much extra rotation and abduction at the hips to maintain a neutral knee position to avoid valgus. And then also another recommendation I have is to simply lower your training max and lower it to where you essentially are using weights where that form breakdown never occurs. So it might be based off, let's say 95% of your true one rep max. And then also lastly, another idea is to simply use something like a hip circle that Mark Bell sells or just any resistance band in general and wrap it around your knees while you squat and do this warming up or do this as an accessory exercise, just like the wider stance squats. And this will just once again teach you to force your knees out and to not let them cave in as you're having that resistance against abduction in the bottom position and throughout the whole back squat. So those are just a couple of squat technique tips that I personally would recommend based on my powerlifting experience on top of the extra abduction work that Andrew recommended. But I'd also like to make it in closing the main point of this video is that not everyone is going to squat the same while as novice and intermediate lifters I think it's crucial that we maintain a high degree of form integrity and aim for textbook form on every single rep to constantly reinforce that position. It's also important to understand that at an elite level, there are going to be different styles of lifting and there are different cues that different people use and they may be able to hit certain positions that look unconventional, but be completely safe in those positions for their specific body type. All right, that's it guys. That's all I have to say. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys. Peace. Man, pop the shooting star. Biggie died, they shot a star. Who you know in West LA? Bring that ruckus to M-A-G's.